Hey, everybody. It's your hospitality friend, Glenn, with the one and only Bruce Ford. We're at Mandalay Bay. I want to thank the great team over there for giving us this incredible view over there. I'm here for the Choice Hotels Conference. Bruce is here for HD Expo. So we thought it'd be a good moment to uh, speak to the vendor community. And don't worry, we'll have another one focused on owners. Uh, but we wanted to talk a little bit about the observations we're seeing here right now. Bruce, great to see you here in Las Vegas. Glenn, it's been a little while. I, oh. I understand you're buying a residence here. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, I, don't so. Las Vegas. I don't think so. Although I did have a lunch meeting over at Aria and I was walking by beer and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> there we go. Great to see you, Glenn. And, and uh, certainly it seems like the hospitality, design, procurement, uh, and owner industry is here in Las Vegas this week. Yeah. And it has been great, great to be here. And uh, business has been good and the weather is spectacular. It really is absolutely perfect. So what's going on right now in the hospitality industry? Um, I've been talking about this for the last year. Conversions are king. I had a chance to talk to uh, David Pepper, chief development officer here the other day, and uh, he said 74% of all Choice Hotel deals last year were conversions, and today, as we're recording this, you guys are going to see this a few days after this, Park Inn by Radisson, it was announced for a reinvention, again, mm. as a conversion brand, fitting into this uh, premium value space above economy, but below mid-scale, so a lot going on. I don't know what they call that. Is that like eco-scale, uh, mid Econo, I don't know. We'll, we'll work on the uh, the verbiage. Uh, um, there. But yes, everybody's trying to go to that space because it. Sometimes people think economy is like a dirty word, mm -hmm. like that can't be a clean place to stay. Well, I think and that perception is changing rapidly. The, yeah. Well, we're hoping so, but I think also the franchise companies will kind of get away from that a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's um. The Spark by Hilton thing is a big conversion brand also, mm -hmm. you know, and they're popping deals left and right of these older motels that, you know, are 50, 80 rooms. And we haven't had an economy national conversion brand like that. Right. And I stayed at the opening. I went in Mystic, yeah. Connecticut when that one opened. And I thought it was a great reinvention of a property that had passed its prime for its previous use. Yeah. You just got to change it up. I mean, we have to think about how to maximize all the square footage that we right. have, mm -hmm. okay? And it doesn't always have to be all guest rooms. I mean, I think the public space makes some difference, and I think that is more of a generational change in logic. Right. So understanding all of this, what should the vendor community understand, and how do you think they could leverage opportunity? Well, I, I still believe that the owners and management companies are looking for partnerships with the branded manufacturers. Okay. So the important things that are going into the hotel, whether it's mm -hmm. Kimball furniture or it's, you know, Kohler faucets or it's LG televisions or anything like that. Okay. Think about how many brands you actually see in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay. The products that are in the room, how many times do you actually see the brand name on the product? Right. Okay. So you're selling them a product at a, at a particular price point. Okay. But you get no recognition inside the guest room. And I think some of the guests kind of want that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you could almost put a QR code. On the on the on the wall in the uh, guest room. Well, now you're going back to, to get well, all the brands of everything that is there. Well, now you're going back to like uh, when W introduced the catalog and you could buy all the the I, stuff in the room. I think it would be yeah. applicable. Oh, and especially if you're talking about a market right now that um, we're reaching maybe potential maximum pricing. So yeah. we need to. I had a conversation with an owner just today as we're recording this. Um, and he was having trouble because he can't raise rates and he's got a select service hotel that doesn't have any opportunity for a lot of uh, upsells and maximizing dollars per sure. customer. Except she could put a couple QR codes on the wall. Yeah, I like it. Oh, I, I, I think it's so right. interesting, okay? Because dude, you have to think about the maximizing of revenue of every square foot that you have. Yeah. And this next generation, I've been telling everybody this week, I've been saying, Make a friend with a 25-year-old because you you don't know. You don't know what they think. Right. I mean, it's 25 years beyond it. They say we're born in the 1900s, Glenn. What the hell is that? 
<laughs> like, oh, well, when someone was born in the 1900s, I, you know, I think uh, the long mustaches and, you know. The... That was us. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, listen, it's been it's been great talking to you. It's good seeing you. And um, we're going to have another. Account episode. Sales 101. Right. That's what we want to do. Make more calls to those ownership and management company people because they want to make deals with you. They want to understand your supply chain. You need to perform for them. I always believe that the best direct relationship only helps the process. Yep, it certainly does. And that's why you got to get out there. You've got to build those relationships because when you build trust, that is really when you're going to be able to close deals. Be sure to check out the all new NoVacancyNews.com. I'm very excited to uh, introduce that. We got a lot of great things coming, including more with this guy right here. See you later.